Hello folks, Nephilim Free here. This video is part one of a new series that I'll be producing over time called the Talk Origins series or some titles to that effect. What I'll be doing is shooting down the claims of TalkIdiots.com. This website is the leading source of fallacies for layperson evolutionists. They get most of their claims and uh, supposed information from these morons at talkidiots.com. I call them talk idiots. Uh, this is where they, they read everything and they get everything. They don't research anything outside their little box because they don't want to believe in creation. For them, it's a religion. So I'm just going to do evidences for evolution, and we'll start by coming across the first one. Phylogenics. Ah, here we are. Does phylogenics provide evidence of evolution? Absolutely not. Here's something I wrote I'd like to read for you. First, let me quote Alan H. Lipton, University of Bristol bacteriologist in the search, scant search for the maker, Higher Times Educational Supplement 2001. He states, but throughout 150 years of science of bacteriology, there is no evidence that one species of bacteria has changed into another, since there is no evidence for species changes between the simplest forms of unicellular life. It is not surprising that there is no evidence for evolution from prokaryotic to eukaryotic cells, let alone throughout the whole array of higher multicellular organisms. Now, Phylogenics demonstrates only that creatures which share a common environment were designed to have similar features because these features make them best suited for that environment. Many creatures share features such as toothy, a toothy mouth and other features which evolutionists claim uh, is because they are relatedness of their relatedness through evolution. But these creatures defy evolution because of the great morphological difference between them and the features such as mimicry, the ability to change color, texture, shape of their skin and other parts of their body to simulate the environment or to other creatures, creatures which evolutionists believe are not related by uh, uh, evolutionary ancestry, such as cuttlefish, octopus, squid, chameleon, and other creatures, and uh, often uh, have this mimicry ability. This discredits their claim, you see. It throws a big cog in their wheels. But evolutionists can't provide an explanation for mimicry because nature can't provide a mechanism by where a creature could possess from birth the ability to mimic its environment or features of the creature which produce mimicry. There's no potential evolution of this, uh, this ability, you see. Thus, such features as a toothy mouth or other features uh, are products of design, just as mimicry is a remarkably good uh, uh, principle of design. For example, humans born with what looks like uh, is a, a tail is merely a piece of skin covering, covered with fat and is caused by an error in the way the spinal system develops as it zippers shut, going downward. When it does not go far enough, it causes spinal bifida. When this zipping process goes too far, it produces what evolutionists call fallaciously a, a vestigial tail. This deformity, however, has no bones, does not possess the spinal cord, and often extends from the sacral vertebra area of the spine well above the actual human tail bones. And yet they claim that it's vestigial of tails. How ridiculous. Now, here's another example. The YouTube user Don Exodus 2 claims that the human, the yolk sac of humans and chickens is evidence that we are distantly related. In chickens, the yolk sac nourishes the embryo during development, its food. But in humans, the yolk sac does not nourish the embryo because humans are attached to their mother by the um umbilical cord. The yolk sac is instead the source of the f human embryo's first blood cells. Here we see that homolog what are called homologous features are not evidence of evolutionary ancestry but elements of common design. So why does Don Exodus 2 put forth this thing when it's known that the yolk sac in chickens is food, but in a human being it becomes blood cells? A totally different purpose. And yet he and other evolutionists still spout this pseudoscience garbage 
that this is evidence of the relatedness between chickens and human beings. It's laughable. But it's sad at the same time. Because they're calling this science, you see. Ernst Haeckel promoted this concept in the mid-19th century and was ridiculed and shamed for it. He was shamed for his fallacious drawings as well. This idea came, became known as ontology recapitulates phylogeny. He claimed that the transverse clefts of the, human, uh, the neck of human embryos are remnant of fish gills, and that this was evidence that embryology provides evidence of ancestry, the imagined relatedness of fish to humans. This is false, however, and it is now known that the fir these first three of these pouches develop into the palatine uh, tonsils, the second become the middle ear canals, and the third and fourth become the parathyroid and thymus glands. That's completely different function, you see. Many common structures in embryos become completely different morphological features in different species because of genetic instructions that, are, that produce them are different and because they serve a completely different function in the mature, fully developed organism, which discredits the idea that they are of common descent. And yet evolutionists still put forth this idea. Understanding Evolution, Berkeley University website states, Embryos do reflect the course of evolution, but that course is far more intricate and quirky than Ernst, than Haeckel claimed. Yeah, it doesn't even happen. It never did. Here they claim to, uh, to, uh, uh, that phylogenics is evidence of evolution by making it seem that it's simply more intricate and quirky than Haeckel claimed. This old lie is still being pushed by evolutionists, though the claim that phylogenics uh, is evidence of evolution has been discredited by countless examples of design in living creatures and the very properties of DNA itself. Some university tech textbooks still promote this fallacy of Ernst Haeckel, including biology by uh, Dr. William Brown uh, uh, and, uh, uh, in 1995, which states that fish, rep uh, reptiles, birds, and humans all share, quote, gill and tail in their early development. Another university text uh, uh, titled Biology by Saunders or Orlando 1999 states, claims that the early stages of embryonic development are almost identical in different, uh, 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 are almost identical in different vertebrate species. Numerous structural similarities are shared by the early stages, including the presence of gill pouches and tail. This is scientific fallacy, folks. Though discredited by modern science, the concept of phylogenics being evidence of evolution is still pushed by evolutionists. For example, the university textbook titled Biology by Kenneth Miller and uh, Levine con uh, con constitutes, uh, continues to provide photographic examples of embryos in various, uh, various species, including humans, and claim that this is evidence of evolution. The difference is that the evolutionists of today have updated their claim by using photographic images of these embryos of different organisms in different stages of embryonic development. For example, one, exam one, one creature might be in the fifth week, and one in the third week, and one in the fourth week, one in the, f in, uh, in, in the, in the ninth week, one in the second week. You see, how is that going to, that doesn't do anything but, but pr uh, promote their lie, uh, demonstrate that what they're claiming is, is uh, fallacious. Uh, and this uh, further uh, illustrates the fallacious nature of their claim of vestigiality and phylogenic relatedness. Biology by Miller and Levine used Haeckel's drawings in, their, in its original form and did not remove them until creationists complained that Haeckel's drawings had been revealed as fallacious, at which time Miller asked the publisher to replace them with newer illustrations of embryos of organisms in different stages of embryonic development. In this way, the evolutionists continue to promote the already exposed scientific fallacy as evidence of evolution by using a new set of images, this time photographic images of organisms in different stages of development. By promoting something which is known to be scientifically false, the evolutionist promotes evolution through scientific fraud. Consider, it is now known that the clefts of the, human, the necks of human embryo, embryos develop into the palatine tonsil, tonsils, the second become the inner ear canals, third and fourth become the parathyroid and thymus glands. And do not and are not into gills of any kind or any kind of breathing apparatus, as with fish, you see. 
So why do then evolutionists continue to promote this claim that the clefts of our remnant of our relatedness to fish, since in fish these clefts develop in the fully formed animal as gills? The answer is quite obvious. Because evolutionism is not science, it is not scientific, and as far as the evolutionist is concerned, it must be promoted at all costs, and the relinquishing of disproven claims to the joy of creationists and loss of them as something which can be put forth as supposed evidence of evolution is appalling to the evolutionist. And they are willing, even eager, to promote scientific fraud, to promote evolutionism. And the concepts of truth and honesty go out the window when, e when necessary to protect their naturalist dogma and the religion of materialism. The evolutionist tree of life is the distortion of taxonomical organization, which ignores similar structures and features in organisms that themselves do not uh, they do not think are, are closely related in the Darwinian tree of life. The evolutionist considers uh, creatures which have similar features are more closely related by ancestry to each other than creatures which do not share certain features. This is based upon their presumption that evolution has produced uh, the, the great variety of life forms and, the, and that these shared features are related by evolutionary ancestry. Life produces after its kind. And evolutionists incorrectly group many families and genus uh, species of life into larger groups based upon the presumption of evolution. Phylogenics was invented by creationists. Phylogenetics demonstrates only that that organisms of various kinds have similar features. It does not provide evidence of evolutionary ancestry, which is discredited by the fact that life was obviously designed. <laughs>